My name is Mark Skeet, and you know, I just want to tell you guys that you got to do something about the attorney misconduct, the attorney corruption, and the conduct of the clerks, and what goes on inside the courts here uh, within the state of Georgia, especially in the city of Atlanta. Well, you know, I'm a hip-hop rock doc director. Started out producing rap records, and I don't want to go into all of my, to my history, but um, started out in the music business, and uh, for several years, I never had any problems, any legal problems. I've never been in trouble with the law in my life. Never been to prison, you know, get a ticket here or there, but, you know, I've never been in trouble with the law. I had this situation uh, with in California, it was a an infringement case, and uh, I hired an attorney. Um, the attorneys decided to take my case, and they went uh, after the infringers in California. Um, right before, and I'm trying to skip through through it, you know, uh, and get to exactly what happened with me, but um, they had dismissed my case, and I, fa I learned later on that that is a sort of a trick that the attorneys tend to pull uh, on, their, on their clients, you know, in terms of dismissing, dismissing their case midstream and siding with the other side and being co-opted by the other side. Now, I went against a very big law firm, and it was the same law firm, actually, that uh, my colleague went against also, um, Leonard Rowe. Um, I can't say their name, but because they recently settled with me like two days ago, <laughs> right? But uh, it's, it's, you know, it's the same firm that Mr. Rowe went against. But um, uh, when you turn the camera on, it really. <laughs> but you got to ask me a question. You know, you, I, I feel like I'm just mumbling. You know what I mean? Where? But listen, the, I filed a lawsuit after they dismissed my case, right? I filed a lawsuit. And on the front of the summons, it says that you have to X, Y, and Z, 21 days, I think it is, to respond. They didn't respond, so I waited a couple of days. I think I waited, I'm not sure, I waited an extra 10 days or something like that. And I went down to the courthouse to the clerk and I asked the clerk to place the defendants in default. And this was the first time that I was ever faced with this type of what I believe to be uh, corruption. The clerk looked to me and said, we're not going to put them in default. You can't, you know, we're just not going to do it. I said, ma'am, the law book is clear. The rule book is clear. They're supposed to respond within 21 days. It says right here that if they don't, you're going to they be placed in, in, in default. And you're telling me no, that you refuse to do it. So what I did was I went and I got the rule book, FRCP, right? Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. And I opened it up to pay to rule 55 that stated clearly that if a defendant or a plaintiff fails to respond to the lawsuit that was filed against them within a certain period of time, 21 days, the clerk must automatically place them in default. They told me to get lost, right? A supervisor came out the back, had words with the supervisor. The next thing I know, a gentleman comes out of the back and he has his, he hides his name up, up here. And when you go inside the federal courthouse, it says that everything is being taped in that area. So he, so before that, I see security come upstairs. The marshals come up. And, you know, I'm like, well, I'm glad you guys are here because I got to show you something. And I told him the story. The marshal said, well, what you say sounds right, it sounds, but we're not lawyers, so we don't know. So the guy, the gentleman then comes out, he has his card in his top pocket, he comes out, 
And he tells him, he says, well, let's go out into the hallway. When he gets me out in the hallway, he tells me, you're not going to get it in here. We're not going to place them in the fault and you can forget about it. It's not going to happen. So I said, what rule book are you following? The rule book is clear. He said, don't worry about the rule book that we're following. You are not going to get a default judgment in this building. And then he told the security guys to kindly escort me out of the building, you know, and um, obviously the judge let them slide with the default. My whole case, the whole time, there, was, there were a lot of different things that were going on that just didn't make sense. You know, my story is not as bad as some of the other stories of people, you know, who are locked away or murder or anything like that. Mine is simply a copyright infringement case. But the corruption, you know, is still there, even though the consequences of what they did is not as bad. Um, I hired, I went through the whole litigation process. I sued the opposing counsel during the litigation process. They fired the attorney. They never notified the court. There were certain things that the opposing side would do and they would never, ever, the, the court would never, ever, uh, you know, would never do anything. They would just allow them to do whatever they wanted throughout the course of the litigation. You know, you know what I mean? I went to UGA and because I thought maybe there was something I was missing. So I went to UGA and I got certified as a paralegal. And then I went and I got a certificate in advanced legal research and writing. And that's when I really realized how corrupt and how far off the charts these people are in, in the, in, uh, inside the courts. Because I know where to go and look and pull the rule and pull the law and pull the case law. And the way they behaved and the way they were operating was totally contrary to anything that was inside those law books down at the law library, you know. So um, obviously I can't say too much because they ultimately the defendant settled with me. Um, the attorneys that put me in this predicament and made me have to fight this case as a pro se plaintiff uh, cost me a lot of money because I had to settle for a lot less than what my case was worth because I believe that the case was fixed. You know, the opposing side, they were just too comfortable. You know, it was as if they knew they had it in the bag and it was only a matter of time before the judge was going to rule in our favor, in their favor. When an attorney walks away from a case and does not notify the court, he obviously has a, a, some level of comfort that he knows the case is going to be thrown, or the case is going to go in his client's favor because he's left himself open for a malpractice claim if he walks away from the case and does not, and if he walks away from the case and loses the case. You, you understand what I'm saying? He uh, leaves himself open for that. So um, that's what he did. When I looked at the way the judge was ruling, coming up with making up arguments for the defendants, I figured that it would be in my best interest to just, you know, say forget about it and um, settle this case and move on and go after the attorneys who would put me in this predicament. Now, these attorneys, there's some very powerful attorneys. One of them used to represent Mitt Romney here in the state of Georgia. This guy's been sued by his clients, been sanctioned by the courts, and they allow him to keep a law license while they disbar others for infractions that are a lot, or violations that are a lot less serious. You know, so my thing at this point is the attorney misconduct is the fight that I'm fighting now because you can't have judicial corruption unless you have attorney misconduct.
they go hand in hand. And that's where my fight lies right now. It's the corrupt and crooked attorneys. Do you know the names of the people at the clerk's office? Oh, it was Miss Pinckney was one of the, was the one who came out and said, nope, I can't, um, I, I, I can't do it. And then she told me, you don't pay me, the judge pays me. And I said, really? The judge pays you? How much she pay you? And then she cleaned it up. Now, my attorneys had threatened me. They told me after they took, they threw my case, took my money, I believe they took my settlement money also because I had a $200,000 settlement on the table. They forced me to allow them to settle for $200,000. And then I give them the okay and they dismiss my case two days later and I never heard anything else about the money. You understand? And then they told me I better shut up or they'll further prejudice my case by telling the judge something about me. I had six judges recuse themselves from my case. I had an attorney who I retained five minutes after I got rid of the old attorneys called down to the judge's chamber. And it's obvious that these lawyers had lied on me. Their names are Patricia Roy and Kerry Ictor. And then there's an attorney named Scott Griffin. Ronald Scott Griffin also. And they used a runner. They used the, the illegal use of a runner uh, within the process of, I don't know if you know what a runner is, but you can't send someone who's not, who is a non-lawyer, right, to go and drum up business for you. And then they bring you the business and you split the money with them. And that, that is a disbarable offense. And the bar turned a blind eye to that, as just like the judges do in a lot of these cases. You know what I mean? So, um, so she called down to the judge's chamber, going back to it, this judge that I, this lawyer that I hired, and the judge got on the phone and said, what did Mark Ski do to you? And the attorney said he didn't do anything. Threatened. They're threatening him. Yeah, did he threaten you? And what had happened was I was in a dispute over a television show, right? And I told the opposing uh, individual's lawyer that either they pay me or I'm going to shut the whole show down. It turns out that his lawyer and my lawyer used to be law partners. And the lawyer who used to work at that law firm was now working at my law firm. And he was the lawyer who did the deal with the television network. So it was one big collusion and one big conspiracy. And this new lawyer whom I hired, she got on the phone and she said, look, this is nothing more than a conspiracy. And what you guys did is run a collusion on my client and it's wrong. So they all sued her after I sued them and blamed her for everything that she did and she wasn't even there when any of the stuff that they did took place. And that is the case that we have ongoing now. I'm going to, I told them that I'm going to protest in front of the bar and call for his bar license to be revoked, Mr. Ictor and Mrs. Roy and, and Griffin and also for Hewitt, who sits over, who's at the bar, who turned a blind eye to the wrongdoing that they engaged in, either they go or he has to go because he's their do boy. And I'm going to leave it right there. And um, maybe you should bring the cameras down to when I protest. You know what I mean? I will. All right. Hang on, I'll let you go yet.